thanks a lot, Gosana. <coughs> but program program directors, uh, Your Excellency, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, <coughs> His Excellency, the Vice President of Namibia, Mr. Nangoro Mbumba, uh, President Kalima Mutlante and Mrs. Mutlante, uh, <coughs> Mama Grasa Michelle. Uh, Honourable Ministers, Premiers and, and Mayors, Your Excellency Ambassador Cecilia Julin, and other Ambassadors and High Commissioners. Uh, the esteemed Mutise and Bokwe families, Chief of the National Defence Force, and other officers of the Defence Force, our religious leaders, <coughs> Fellow mourners, comrades, ladies and gentlemen, we have convened here to say a final farewell to a very dear comrade, Ambassador Billy Mudise. I would like to believe that by now all of us are familiar with Billy's biography, which, for instance, is contained in the bio uh, obituary which will be given and the other tributes that have been delivered. And accordingly, there is no need for me, therefore, to recount that biography. However, I must repeat that that biography tells us that for 63 years, from 1955, when he first went to Forte, to 2018, when he finally left us, Billy was a loyal member and activist of the African National Congress. It therefore stands to reason that that membership of the ANC surely defined in very good measure who Billy Mudise was and dictated what he did. And this is because, as we all know, the six decades during which Billy was a member and activist of the ANC were very critical in the process of the making and transformation of South Africa and therefore the evolution of the ANC itself. And thus, in Billy Mutise, we, we have one of those comrades who has been present as an actor in the process I've just mentioned of the making and transformation of our country and the evolution of the ANC. And as we all know, this was a process which, among others, included uh, a most determined and multi-sided struggle within South Africa with the broad liberation movement united around the Freedom Charter, combined with a similarly determined and truly massive international movement of anti-apartheid solidarity. With both of these offensives, the domestic and the international, which obliged the apartheid regime to enter into negotiations with the liberation movement to end the system of white minority rule, which led to the moment when we said free at last, followed by the democratic elections since 1994, with the ANC winning all the national elections during those years of democratic rule, and consequently which also led to South Africa's assumption of a rightful place in Africa and the rest of the world after many years of international rejection and isolation. All these were each great victories in themselves. And as South Africans, we've owed it to the architects of each of these victories to bestow on them the deserved accolades. And of course, those accolades are finally due to all of those, including the masses of our people, whose collective actions finally brought freedom to our country. Billy Mutise occupies an honored place among these who must receive those accolades. However, it must surely be a matter of common cause among all of us that truly to honor these great patriots requires more than these praises which we must indeed shower on them. What is imperative, in addition, 
is that we must do our best to ensure that the example they set and the legacy they left behind. The funeral of uh, Ambassador Billy Modise continuing this morning at Marks Park. We saw Nkosa Zanat Lamini Zuma take to the stand. And now we see former President Thabo Mbeki speaking of his interactions and experiences with Billy Modise, also uh, talking about his life, his legacy, and the contributions he made to both South Africa as a country and also to the African National Congress as well. But stay tuned to Afro World View for further details and developments. Moving on with our bulletin and going to news just in, unions are currently in consultations after a fresh offer from ESCOM. The power utility has come back to the negotiations this morning with an improved offer. Now to give us the latest details, uh, we will be joined now uh, by our reporter. But here's what the unions have been mandated to do by their members, ESCOM employees. Uh, as the NEM, if everything fails here today, um, uh, during, uh, uh, during the if we can't reach an amicable uh, settlement, we, we're going to have a National Shop Sword Council uh, where our members will give us of ma a mandate of what to do next. And that's, that's, we, what, that's what we're going to do. Our members will give us a mandate. We cannot preempt and tell you what's, what, what is that mandate. Yeah, it's uh, sad that there should be this uh, kind of negotiating process where it is management versus workers. Uh, where each party is trying to uh, obtain the upper hand. Uh, it's certainly, uh, from the Labour point of view, uh, they have demonstrated that they are able to uh, effectively uh, shut down uh, very significant portions of Eskom's uh, generation fleet. Uh, my calculation is that the previous, during the previous load shedding about a week or so ago, uh, some uh, 6,000 megawatts was taken offline over and above any other uh, generation capacity that was down for maintenance or unplanned outages. So I think Labour has demonstrated that they are uh, able to and willing uh, to really place security of supply. Well, for the latest events on the ground now, we speak to our reporter on the story, Kulofelo Setlajile. Good morning to you, Kulofelo. Just talk us through the latest developments with regards to these ongoing negotiations. Reports that ESCOM has now brought forward a new offer. What details can you share with us? Kulofelo, not sure if you can hear me clearly. Well, a very good morning to you and our viewers at home. Well, indeed, today is the second day of the session of negotiations between ESCOM and the labor unions. I can absolutely hear you, Abigail. Can you hear me? And the labor unions and of course you know understanding what happened yesterday as we concluded that session ESCOM went back to the drawing board after the unions rejected that five percent wage increase that they had tabled and now today ESCOM is offering, offering a newly revised uh, wage increase offer of about 6.2 percent uh, for this year and then 6.6 percent for next year and now just moments ago uh, one of the unions was deliberating outside as you understand that once that particular offer was tabled the unions then went into their separate uh, individual caucuses so that they can go over and deliberate on this uh, newly tabled offer to see whether or not it actually meets uh, uh, some of the demands that they've been making and now of course uh, the unions have been deliberating caucusing uh, to see if indeed this particular offer will be beneficial for their members all right Colofello, thank you very much uh, for the update and i do apologize there seems to be a uh, slight delay there between the two of us uh, we will continue this conversation uh, probably at a later stage, but that was uh, our reporter, Kolofelo Setlajila, just giving us the latest details with regards, with regards to the ongoing negotiations between ESCOM and various unions, NUM, NUMSA, as well as Solidarity, a brand new offer on the table now, but stay tuned to Afro Worldview for those developments. Head, let's head back now to those funeral proceedings uh, at Marks Park, the funeral uh, of uh, Mr. Modise, let's go live. If that we had good reason why we should get the support of the ANC leadership at Forte, we were convinced that that support would legitimize in the eyes of our parents 
and the ANC as a whole and our communities our decision to leave Lovedale without being expelled. And I mentioned this incident which occurs almost 60 years ago to indicate the political weight the activist for liberation, Billy Mutise, carried even when he was still part of the youth. Having served as secretary of the Forte SRC, secretary of the ANC Youth League at Forte, and the Victoria East ANC region, and member of the national leadership of the National Union of South African Students, NUSAS, the only non-racial and anti-apartheid national student organization at the time. It was surely a matter of great pride and satisfaction to Billy that in the years after he left Forte, successive generations of youth and students in our country continue to play important roles both in the struggle for liberation and the process of the construction and development of a democratic society. Our experience during 24 years as a democratic country has confirmed that the task of the eradication of the legacy of colonialism and apartheid and building a prosperous non-racial and non-sexist democracy is indeed very complex. Among others, this emphasizes the great importance of doing everything necessary and possible to develop and inspire our youth to engage in this historic process of the fundamental social, socio-economic transformation of our country, drawing the necessary lessons from the example Billy Mutisa set during his own youthful years. And that same experience of 24 years of democracy has also firmly confirmed that South Africa is not an island sufficient unto itself. To succeed in all its endeavors, it needs to be truly, fully integrated within Africa and the rest of the world. We are indeed very honored that Her Excellency Ambassador Cecilia Julian of Sweden has been able to join this final farewell to Billy Mutise, holder, as she said, of the prestigious Swedish Order of the Polar Star. In this context, I'd like to believe that all of us are very familiar with the outstanding role Sweden played in terms of the provision of massive support to our struggle. As Ambassador Julian said, and as has been said already, we must, of course, continue to pay tribute that is due to Billy for the work he did from 1960 onwards to help build what became a very powerful Swedish movement of solidarity with the peoples of South and Southern Africa. It spoke to Billy's dedication to the accomplishment of his, this task that as a student in Sweden, he opted to abandon his studies in medicine to pursue other subjects, which gave him more time to do his political work both in Sweden and some other Nordic countries. And that dedication contributed enormously to the privilege we enjoy to this day of excellent relations between South Africa and Sweden and very warm, genuine people-to-people -people relations between our two peoples. And I'd like to believe that as we continue the work to strengthen our relations with the rest of the world, including by helping to build a global movement for the democratization of the system of international relations, our diplomats will do their best to learn everything that is relevant from the work of Billy Mujise, the work he did, which helped to win for our country a genuine friend, the Kingdom of Sweden. Ambassador Mudise hoped that as a country strives, as our country strives to liberate itself from the negative tendencies which have engulfed it during the recent years, it would also renew its focus on the strategic objective of the Renaissance of Africa, loyal to the long established Pan Africanist tradition of his movement, the ANC. 
As he taught at the Namibia Institute in Lusaka as Vice President of Namibia, as I said, to train Namibians who would help to manage and develop the liberated Namibia, working side by side with the current President of the Republic of Namibia, His Excellency Aga Gengob, Billy treated this task as an organic, an organic part of his life's mission as a cadre of the ANC. He had carried out his work in Sweden and other Nordic countries of helping to build the solidarity movement I've mentioned, working together with other liberation movements, such as those of Namibia, of Zimbabwe, and Mozambique. And somebody like the late Namibian, uh, the vice president, that was at that time, Jaretundu Kozongwizi, founder of SWANU, which ultimately disappeared, was to Billy a colleague, given that he, Kozongwizi, had been an active member of the ANC Youth League when he was a student at Forte. Inspired by his vision and commitment relating to our continent, Africa, and the practical example he set, we must pay tribute to and truly honor Billy Mutise by regaining the unqualified respect of the whole of Africa for our country by doing the good and right things which gave hope to all Africans, including the African diaspora. The departure of Billy Mutise from the world of the living <clears throat> confirms sad news we cannot escape, that an eminent generation in our country, has, which has been involved in struggle for six, six decades or more, to change the lives of our people for the better, is disappearing forever. <clears throat> These are men and women like Billy Mutise, who throughout their lives, and despite their being confronted by great challenges, have consistently conducted themselves according to a noble value system and remained at all times humble, humanist, never self-serving, permanently ready to serve the people. <clears throat> Thus it is that when death robs us of any among this generation of liberators that I've mentioned, this produces a sense of foreboding that unless we act to prevent this by ensuring that many among the living emulate our liberators, such as Billy Mundise, one day we will wake up and find that there are none in our country who would conduct themselves according to the noble value system I've mentioned, humble, humanist, and never self-serving. Sisioli and your daughter Tandi and the rest of the Modis and Boko families. And please accept our sincere condolences and the loss of one very dear to you, Ambassador Billy Modise. And our ambassador, our dear ambassador, our esteemed leader, our elder brother and friend, Comrade Billy, honored member of the Order of Lutuli, while we live, we will do our best to help ensure that the nation does not lose the extraordinary legacy you have left behind for its benefit. Intent to give substance to what has been and will be said that the spirit of Billy Mutise lives on. And may the outstanding patriot, Ambassador Billy Mutise, rest in eternal peace. Thank you.